as part of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Nigerian Army derives its status and roles from sections 217 to 220 of the 1999 Constitution. In subsection 1, it reads in part, There shall be an armed forces for the Federation, which shall consist of an army. Subsection 2A, B and C describes the roles as defending Nigeria from external aggression, maintaining its territorial integrity, and suppression of insurrection and act in aid of civil authorities to restore order when called upon to do so by the president. Since its establishment in 1863, the Nigerian army has successfully participated and led many international and national operations, some of which are the Congo Crisis of 1960 to 1965, Nigerian Civil War 1967 to 1970, Nigerian Cameroon border conflict, Liberian civil wars from 1989 until 1997, Sierra Leone civil war 1991 to 2002, and also internal security operations. The various feats recorded by the Nigerian army in all its operations earned it accolades internationally and a fitting description as the pride of the nation. The nation, Nigeria, faced with many internal insurrection and rebellion, called on the Nigerian army in all these situations to quell the serious threats to peace and unity of the country. And the Nigerian army diligently discharged all assigned duties. Some distinguished and illustrious officers have led this outstanding army to become the unifying pillar of the country, Nigeria. Sadly, this great Nigerian army was ill-prepared to emphatically eliminate a tiny group of individuals who rose up against the nation-state Nigeria in 2009. This group, which initially called itself Jamatu al-Asuna Lidwahul wal-Jihad, commonly known as Boko Haram, grew until it became a bigger and stronger threat to the corporate existence of the nation. It was observed that the Nigerian army could not effectively checkmate the destructive group for the following reasons. Inadequate training, inadequate fighting tools, inadequate motivation, politicization of the army. The pride of the nation seems to have lost its glory as these rampaging terrorists were killing and maiming people and destroying properties at will. Then in 2015, there came a silver lining in the dark clouds. President Muhammadu Buhari took over mantle of leadership as the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And in his wisdom, he appointed a thoroughbred infantry officer, then Major General Tukur Yusuf Buratai, as the 20th chief of army staff of the Nigerian army. The new chief of army staff was promoted to the enviable rank of a lieutenant general. He quickly marshaled out his vision for the Nigerian army. I set out to present my vision based on my experiences in the army at the tactical, operational and the strategic level which I have uh, commanded. I felt, yes, I, I, I have to put all those challenges together to bring out my vision for the Nigerian Army, uh, which is to have a professionally responsive Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional roles. So if you see this vision, uh, it has uh, three to four uh, key variables. He identified training and constant training as a major factor for actualizing his vision for the Nigerian army. As this is in agreement with his concept of sweat more during peacetime so as to bleed less during war. Uh, this popular adage that if you uh, sweat during peacetime you bleed less during war. And uh, this is what is paying off for us that uh, we've been training since 2015 and uh, we've been able to contend and contain 
you know, with the you know, various uh, security uh, challenges. Beginning from early 2016, the gains of Lieutenant General T.Y. Buratai's renewed injection of trainings can be seen in all operations of the Nigerian Army. The Nigerian Army, leading other military services and security agencies, was able to quickly reclaim all territories under the control of Boko Haram terrorists, and people began to return to their communities. Gradually, normal activities were restored. With the coming of General Brate as Chief of Army Staff, considerable achievement has been recorded in the area of security. You see, before the coming of the Chief of Staff, Chief of Army Staff, honestly, we know the situation we are in, in Borno. For the first four or five years, we are not even receiving business here in Maiduguri. Because one, the airport itself has been closed for commercial flight. Because the whole airport was by then destroyed by Boko Haram. No road at that time, before his coming, before taking the mantle leadership of the soldiers, we are not having, we don't even have road. Because the only road we have at that time was from Maiduguri to Kano Road. All other roads were besieged and taken over by Boko Haram. But with the coming of uh, the chief of army staff, Allahi, all these things has become a story of the first. To institutionalize constant trainings in the Nigerian army for effective operations across the country, the Nigerian army leadership under Lieutenant General T.Y. Buratai reawakened and revitalized some crucial but hitherto moribund training structures and formations. What we are doing here in NASI is more of a generic all soldiers, officers training and further training at the tactical and uh, to some level operational uh, level training. Why that of Buniyadi is purely tactical special forces training pre-induction into the theater in the Northeast. And it provides a platform for acclimatization for troops who are moving into the theater. Having uh, done a lot of threat analysis of what we are going to that kind of uh, encounter, where we are going to that kind of raid, then our training is going to be tailored towards that. Like now here, we are tr training our people to operate using these uh, EAVs that you are seeing here, to operate in uh, the northeast, where we are going to now combat the Boko Haram, I mean, uh, insurgents. To consolidate on gains recorded, New specialized and tactical training schools and facilities were added to bring the Nigerian Army's operation to contemporary standards and support in the intractable internal security challenges facing the country. The training has been going on well. Uh, we have not had any maybe logistic uh, or administrative uh, challenges so far. Uh, both myself and my crew, we are ready. And uh, for the Federal Republic of Nigeria to purchase such a vehicle to us and which we are privileged to be among the pioneer users of that vehicle we will not uh, let the country down. We will do our country proud. I want to thank the Mr. President, the Chief Army Staff for providing us with this new equipment and by the grace of God we are going to use this new equipment to perform well and make sure we end the insurgency and we are going to make the, the country proud. Well, I'm very grateful to the Nigerian Army for them to have trained me 
to this stage. At first, I've always admired their efforts, but I've not known the extent of the sacrifice. Just for this, I've seen the extent, and I can say I'm better equipped to be able to defend my nation. I now know what it means to be at the forefront of war, and I'm ready, and I think I'm gallant. This training has improved my sense of judgment, has improved my capacity to handle stressful conditions and has improved my mental ability. This will contribute by providing well-trained officers who will lead the security team in Nigeria to protect Nigeria from all terrorist groups. With these training institutions fully operationalized, new vigor is now injected into operations through uniquely conceptualized real-time exercises. From northeast to southeast, north central to south south, northwest to southwest, it is one security challenge to the other, and peculiar security exercises were designed and deployed to tackle them. With Operation Lavia Dole taking care of Boko Haram adventure, Exercise Ayem Akwatuma was deployed in the north central to flush out marauding armed herdsmen and bandits while exercise Crocodile Smile handled the disturbing incident of oil and gas operation saboteurs, kidnapping and youth restiveness in South-South and Southwest. Exercise Harbin Kunama was introduced in the Northwest to checkmate banditry and cattle rustling. In the Southeast, where insurgents operating as the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipob, and kidnappers were daily harassing innocent Nigerians, Exercise Egweke, which later changed to Exercise Etelogudo, made sure that normalcy was restored. Every uh, person who really knows what security is all about, we appreciate that all those innovative exercises that also dovetail into operations in all the parts of this country have been, to a large extent, responsible for containing and reducing the effect of insecurity across Nigeria. The successes of these exercises brought so much joy to the people. Uh, the Chief Prime Minister has given us a lot of support and uh, he is always supporting the government, particularly on this issue of dialogue. He supported the issue of dialogue because without him we could not achieve what we have achieved now because uh, uh, we want, I want him, and I pleaded with him that no matter what it is, let us go into a dialogue uh, table and dialogue with these people, and he supported that. So with his support and the army support, we have achieved what we recorded today. Now we have recorded a lot of successes on the issue of killings. The peace initiative has to be supported with power, uh, 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 fire. Without that, uh, uh, even the the, 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 the hardest may not listen. They know the capacity of the military. And uh, through the period, we are grateful to uh, Burota. He raised uh, the battalion to a brigade, brought a brigadier general, and also established uh, additional uh, battalion, one in Daura, another one in Malufashi, was also a plant established one in Fontua. So we have seen the interest and the commitment of the military hierarchy, including the officers and men and officers that are here, in really working towards dealing with this situation. During the day, you probably will not see the army except in the major road checkpoints and where have you. But at night, they operate, you know, they do stop and search, they match our critical road areas, and this has brought safety to the, to the, to the state. Enugu State is in the hands of God. The Nigerian Army, its food division is also in the hands of God. We are grateful to the Chief of Army Staff, the GOC, the garrison commander, the officers of men for the peace we have with the enemy. To God indeed be the glory.
the Nigerian army has actually been very supportive to the state. I do believe that uh, they are a very disciplined set of people and on our own part we're working very strongly with them to be sure that uh, we get them comfortable so that uh, together uh, we can help to secure the peace in the state. Uh, for which we're very grateful to the Chief of Army Staff that he did give approval. Uh, luckily, too, they've given approval for uh, uh, some other battalion in the state, for which we're happy. And we're hoping that um, all this put together will help to uh, enhance the security that we have in Delta State. When Operation Crocodile Smile Circle started, there may have been people who had misgivings, but I think what we saw a lot of work was done in not only flushing out these criminals, but ensuring that our oil facilities, our national key national assets, are protected. It does the way here, army, 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 you're wrong. But this day, the army has proven to be as friendly as you can imagine. Army going to school to teach people to open some head of. They are taught how to kill people. That's the primary. Uh, responsibility. But now they are become, they have become so friendly and so accommodating. So um, to me, the way they relate to me, I'm so appreciative. By the time the Nigerian army were much more around, they became friendly and we can uh, we operated freely. We mingled together. It is only the criminals that will see them and run. Once you are a decent young man, you will enjoy the company of the people around here. They were not brutal. They were quite good. But when I noticed that they left, I wept. I said, how would I, if it were within my powers and uh, disposition to reach out to the authorities concerned, I would say, let them return for us to have the... The presence of the Nigerian army here is very enjoyable in the first place because from what you've been observing before their presence or the presence of the Nigerian army here, it was so sacrilege and savage. But their presence here gives us some savour experience and relief because we are battling under the presence and the forceful hands of the kidnappers, armed robberies, and rapers. They've been raping our guests, our wives, snatching things from us by force. But the presence of the Nigerian army gave us some relief, very much relief. Let me not just say some relief, total relief. We had a lot of security challenge, particularly we had the issue of uh, men and farmers. Then we have internal crisis again. All this is will have taking place at the same time. Uh, to God be the glory. The army came me through the help of the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Brate. They came me deploy their people to make sure that there's peace. I will tell you that even the farmers who could not go back to their who were who, who were not able to go to their farm back to the farm now. As regards to what is currently happening in the country today, I think it's politics. When you look at it, the military are trying their best. Commendations by these joyous Nigerians are a reflection of the mood in the front lines, where officers and soldiers were geared to give their best for a leadership that cares for them and their fatherland. Actually, you see, 2014 precisely, they use this very location to attack Giva barracks, where they free a lot of their prisoners. Then there wasn't deployment here. All this equipment were not here. Whereas at when uh, Chief of Army Staff took over, a lot of equipment has been brought here. There was nothing here. The troop deployment was just somewhere there, one village there would yeah. Or since then, a lot of equipment had been brought, and we were able to deter any attack or any other thing that comes to this, uh, this general area. Lieutenant General T.Y. Bratai has been a nice chief. He has done well in terms of the welfare and equipment. He has really done well. He has encouraged us to boost our morale in terms of feeding, in terms of welfare pass, in terms of, uh, you know, he has really done well. I really say kudos to him. Yeah, I'm very, very motivated because to, for Chief Abbey staff to come here, come down here, come and stay with us inside this booth, so he's a morale booster. I'm very, very motivated. Our welfare has greatly increased because since chief families have been giving the soldiers and the officers uh, quarterly uniform allowance, at the same time 
their monthly allowance has increased 100 percent this has greatly boosted the morale of the soldiers that are fighting efficiently so they are very ready because they get everything they want so they are very ready to to to, to, to fight today the Nigerian Army of Lieutenant General T.Y. Boretai vision of a professionally responsive army in the discharge of its constitutional roles is gradually evolving with strong emphasis on training and constant training for superior asymmetric warfare skills, availability of modern equipment, and its handling for effective mobile precision. For you to be professional, there are ingredients that you must partake, and one of them is training. And since he came to retrain and make the officers professional, the soldiers professional in the handling of their weapons, in their dealings with civilians, their area of operation, training has been very key. So he has emphasized training, retraining, remodeling, restructuring, and reappraising. It is a total package where all the training modules that have been all been reviewed and upgraded and updated. You have new equipment coming in to as part of the uh, retraining and retraining process. You have the Land Forces Simulation Center that is there where the troops and even the officers undergo training. For the Nigerian army to effectively discharge its assigned duties to Nigeria, the undiluted support of all Nigerians is required. The Nigerian army is the people's army, and it is poised to assist government in securing the nation at all times.